Welcome back everybody and let us start off with the command injection. Now in the previous video I told you a little bit about the command injection, but let us actually get the practical uh, method of using that attack. So the command injection, well, as I said, some web applications can use parts of their operating system to do something. As, and uh, as I gave the example, for example, pinging. Now, usually the command injection itself uh, will run the command on the same server, but depending on the architecture of the server itself, it can also execute the command on another server as well. Now, what I mean by that is, let's say the same example as before, which is the pinging the machine. So you go to the website, which basically pings the machine. Let me just actually try to find that website. So I will turn the burp suit on. I will open another terminal for me. And let us actually try to find the legit website that pings another machine or another website. I believe there are lots of them online, so we will just find uh, one of them. So let me just turn on the burp suit. And while this is turning on, let me enlarge this terminal. Okay, so this is, wait, this, let us just turn off the intercept. And once we turn off the intercept, let us go to the Firefox. So let us just try to search for the simple pinging website. Maybe that will work, maybe it won't. I just want to show you that those websites do exist. Now, our Firefox is a little bit slow because of the burp suit, so let us just wait for it for a few seconds. Or maybe it's better free ping test tool, ping your server or website. So we just click on the first link and let us see what kind of website this is. As we can see, here is the web server name. So this is the type of website I was talking about. So basically here you just put your web server name and it will ping your server in order to check if it is online or not. Now, what I was talking is that if, for example, this website was uh, vulnerable to the command injection, we could possibly run any command that we can run in our own terminal also right here. And it will process the command in the server's terminal. But also it can send the command to another server and we could actually execute this command to the to another server as well. So let us start off with the website that we can actually test. You shouldn't be testing any the web, any of these websites you do not own. So even if this one is vulnerable, which I doubt since it was first and probably one of the most famous ones, it probably isn't vulnerable to the command injection, but we will use a website that is vulnerable to the command injection. So actually, I don't know why I closed Firefox. We need to go visit our virtual machine, which is our OWASP machine. Let me just check the IP address of it. Should be dot one dot nine no it's dot six okay and let us go 192.168.1.6 now once you are here what you want to do is go to the damn vulnerable web application i believe we didn't go here uh, before so just click on this now what this will ask you is the username and password now you can just type here the username and password which is admin admin but let us actually try to practice some of the uh, one of the attacks that we covered before. And one of those attacks is the Hydra. So let us actually brute force this uh, login page. It is a good practice as we did cover this before. So what we want to do is open our terminal and we will do it fast. I won't cover any of the any of the syntax since I covered in it in previous videos. You can check that out if you want to. What we basically want to do is type Hydra and the syntax is similar. So as in the previous videos, so we type the IP address, we are posting the form. So HTTP form post, whoops. Now before I type this, actually, let me just show you, I do have the same 
files as before, which is the users.txt and passwords.txt. So we will use the same lists as in the previous videos. So let us start again. We type here the the IP address, then the post form. So HTTP form post, and then we specify the link. Now, in order for us to check out the link, let us go right here, and we can see that the link, the, the path is dva login.php. So let us copy that, and let us paste it right here. So once we do that, we want to specify the username and password, and we want to say to click on the uh, submit button, and we want to specify a string that it will give for every incorrect login. Now, in order for us to see what string it would give, let us just type here something random and see what it gives us as an error. So it gives us login fail. So we will use this string in order to specify uh, the correct from the incorrect login credentials. So now that we want, now what we want to do is inspect element. So let us inspect the element in order to find out the name of the username and the name of the password login for. Now what I mean by that, let me just show you, as we can see, form action login.php method post. We click here on arrow down, field sets in order to find out, and we here we can see a label for user username. The name for username, the name for this field is username, which is most likely always going to be something like that, or user or something like that, so we, we cover this and uh, we divide these two with the two dots, so we type here username equals the upper arrow, then user, the upper another arrow, this sign, let me make this larger so you can see the entire command. Okay, so then after that we want to see what is the name of the password field, which is probably going to be the password, name password. So the name of the password field is password, so we specify right here password equals again upper arrow pass upper arrow and then we want to specify the login button which is called login as we can see right here so as we can see the submit we should type here we should type here submit equals login or login equals submit since the name of the button itself is login and the action is submit so let us just type that login equals submit and then we specify another two dots which means to divide these sections and we specify the string that we get once we uh, provide a wrong username and password which is login failed. So let us just copy this, paste it right here, close our apostrophe and then uh, specify the list and the list of usernames and the list of passwords. So capital L users.txt and then capital P passwords.txt. And let this run. It should find the password and username which is admin admin. Let us just see right here. And as we can see it finished and it found one way available username and one available password. Now if you wanted to you could just type here and skip this part. It is good always to have a good practice of something that you learned in the previous videos. So we do not want to save this. Let us just close this. And once we are here, what we want to do is we want to go to the command execution part. So click on the command execution part and you will see the similar website as the one we visited before, which is the ping for free. So basically you just type here as it says the IP address and it will ping it. Now we can try it. Let us ping my router since it is online, of course. I wouldn't be able to access the internet if it wasn't. And we can see the pinging results. So it performed three ping scans and we can see that it received three packets. So that's good. But let's say for example, you were, uh, you think that this is vulnerable possibly for the command execution and you try a simple command which is 192.168.1.1 where we specify our router IP address and we type here the 
left, let me just find where is it on my keyboard, the dot and the comma, in order to divide these two commands, and we type here, for example, who am I? And we did cover this command, it will give the the account on the terminal on this web server if it is vulnerable to the command execution. So we submit that and we can see that it executed the ping scan and it also gave us the output who is running on that server, which basically tells us that this server is vulnerable to the command injection. We were able to execute the command on the server that isn't only the pinging command. Now, we will continue, I will continue to show you how to actually exploit this. Now, for now on, we just ran a simple command in order to find out whether it's vulnerable or not. And in the next video, I will show you how to exploit this and make that server connect to our own machine. So, that's about it for this lecture. We will continue in the next one, and I hope I see you there. Bye.